Hello, fellow Rosarians. What's more exciting than all the roses in your garden this year? What you might be able to add for next year. So I've been doing a lot of research to find out what the new varieties are. And as you know, David Austin is very mum. They are very tight lipped and I have reached out to them and asked for them to please share it with us but I will let you know if they respond back. But in the meantime, I have some really fun roses that of course I'm adding a few to my list because they are beautiful. So let's talk about how I'm gonna break this down today. First, um, there is Jackson and Perkins and they have exclusive roses that they breed, grow and sell. Nobody else can sell them. So we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about the new roses from Mayland and Cordes. And then we're also gonna talk about the new roses from Bedard and Carruth. So let's go ahead and get started and get your pens and paper ready to jot down all of the notes for the roses that you're interested in. So as we think about placing these orders, it's interesting um, because when I've been talking to some of the vendors and I ask them, when a new rose is introduced for 2022, will you be able to order it and get it in stock? And there's varying responses where some vendors are not able to get those new releases. And so I also am going to share with you the 2021 releases in case you missed them. So let's go ahead and get started first with what's coming out in 2022. And I want to start with the Carruth and Bedard roses. So I'm going to put up here on the screen a picture while I tell you a little bit about each one. First, let's talk about Sweet Madame Blue. And it was interesting because when I look at this rose and I read the write-up on it, who its parents are, the hybridizer is Christian Bedard. Um, it is a striking resemblance to Violet's Pride, also a week's rose by Christian Bedard. And so when I've done a little bit of reading, um, they'll just say that it's a sister to Violet's Pride, but I'm not sure what the difference is because it looks like the same bloom size the same petal count, the same overall shrub size. So I'm gonna to have to reach out and see if I can get some additional information on that. Let me know, do you think it looks a lot like Violet's Pride? Okay, I'm pulling this description uh, from springhillnursery.com and I'll link it down below. They already have it on their site to get ready for pre-orders. If you're looking for a shrub rose that's covered in flowers for most of the summer, and is almost as gorgeous during the times when it's not, consider this sister to Violet's Pride, one of the finest rose hybrids. Sweet Madame Blue yields clusters of full looking blooms that release a moderate fragrance that is both sweet and spicy. The foliage and perfectly rounded habit add further to this rose's appeal, particularly when it's not in bloom. Offers long lasting colors and a very strong resistance to several major rose diseases. So I also ask him, which rose diseases? Are we talking about black spot? I'm certain that he's not talking about rose rosette, but I will ask him what other diseases uh, is he referring to? Uh, warmer zones tend to yield larger floribundas. It was hybridized in 2008 and took all of this time just to be able to release in the coming year. Um, so that is the description for Sweet Madame Blue. The size is three foot by three foot approximately. It has a strong citrus and spice smell. And you'll see that telltale lavender with the magenta colored heart in the center that's very reminiscent of what we know from Violet's Pride. That one is on my list. The next one is by Christian Bedard also, and this is a miniature for all of my folks that reach out asking me about miniatures. This one's colors look so amazing. I would love to have this in a full size shrub. It is orange overlaid with purple smoke miniature. And it's no surprise that in its parents, it's Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo has a very similar appearance. So this is a miniature and let me go ahead and read on that for you. The blooms are gonna be one and one half to two inches in diameter, so a little bit tiny. This old fashioned flower is sure to captive garden visitors. The upright pointed buds open to orange toned petals with purple overlays, giving the flowers a rich smoky appearance. 
With a 40 to 70 petal count, the petite double flowers look very full. When passerby stop to admire them, they'll be rewarded with a mild tea fragrance. It has dark green, glossy foliage that promotes a perfect backdrop for the flowers. So again, it's got that very good disease resistance that we need to ask about. It's growing only 12 to 20 inches tall. So if you're to consider this, put this in the front of the border, I would think this is the same height really as a salvia. So how fun to add this into your garden, uh, just to add so much interest and color. And it would be a companion if you're into the larger shrub roses like I am. Just something fun to think about. So that's Midnight Fire. So let's talk about a beautiful rose. Oh my goodness. And it's interesting what I want you guys to do. I'm going to pop some pictures up on the screen. When you look at the stock photo that comes from them, it does not look like the photos that are listed on other vendor websites. So make sure you're doing searches to see all of the colors. This has stripes on it, but the stock photo doesn't show that. Um, so it's a Grandiflora pop art. Oh, it does, and it says pink and yellow striped fragrant grandiflora, but it's interesting the stock photo does not show that. Um, it is going to be, the bloom size is four to four and a half inches in diameter, old fashioned and cuppy, and let me go ahead and read to you what it says about pop art. Unlike most striped roses, which typically feature red blooms with light yellow striping, the flowers of this unique variety are pastel pink with stripes that are deeper yellow. As a non-clustering grandiflora, its lush flowers grow one to a stem, not together in bunches. You'll appreciate how the glossy foliage sets off the blooms so well. Pop Art offers long-lasting colors, a moderately fruity scent, and very strong resistance to diseases such as rose rust. Aha! We're getting into the details of what they mean by their disease resistant. Uh, rose rust, downy mildew, and powdery mildew. How tall it grows and how wide it spreads depends on the climate and warmer zones producing larger plants. So this rose is gonna grow about four and a half foot by three foot wide. And I, if you're not into stripes, you might be in time and just watch all of the pictures that people post. For me, I wasn't a stripe person. And as I started seeing that more muted color that it produces in the summer and um, the later months, I really, really am enjoying it. So I hope you see lots of pictures of that in the coming year and that you'll like it as much as I do. And that is a Christian Bedard rose and it is definitely on my list. Also by Christian Bedard is Chantilly Cream. Chantilly Cream is going to have very large blooms, four to four and a half inches, and the height is interesting because it lists between two foot and five foot tall. Here's a classic hybrid tea whose strong, very sweet fragrance will enthrall the senses of any person fortunate enough to happen across your garden. An overall full plant, Chantilly Cream's double flowers create an old fashioned look and the bush is nice and vigorous. Despite the bloom coloring being on the light side, this rose stands up to the heat of the summer sun and its hues are long lasting. It also features very strong resistance to rose rust, downy mildew, powdery mildew, so my thoughts about white roses, I have a lot of whites here and if they're in the full sun, they're going to brown. And if they're in the shade or not full sun, they look beautiful and they stay white. And so I really wanna have some whites here on the sun side. With this description saying that it will, not, it will stand up to the heat of the sun. This one is probably on the list. Okay, so let's look at the last one from Weeks Roses by Tom Caruth. This is called Forever Amber. It is three and a half to four inch blooms. It's gonna grow three foot by three foot. And it says Forever Amber. It's a floribunda. You'll be enraptured by the way its clusters of exquisite flowers illuminate your landscape. These decidedly frilly, full bodied blooms are old fashioned in appearance and release an irresistible fruity scent. Forever Amber boasts a very neat, rounded, bushy habit that fills 
beautifully with leaves, leaving no gaps between the branches. And it's ideal for a hedge or as a component of a shrub border. A hardy, low maintenance rose. It features long lasting colors and very strong resi resistance to diseases, rust, downy mildew, and powdery mildew. And as I mentioned, it grows three foot by three foot. So forever amber, also on my list. <laughs> so weeks, you guys knocked it out of the park. I mean, I practically, I want all of them. I might consider a miniature, but I'm just not a miniature person. But every other rose on here, it's going to be my garden. <laughs> so now let's talk about Mayland and Cord's roses. I've got four of them to talk to you about here. So first, let's talk about Mayland. This is a miniature rose. And when I saw it, it reminded me of Skylark from David Austin. Let me know if you're feeling um, that it has a very strong resemblance with that cuppy, delicate bloom. So Pink Sunblaze maintains an excellent habit that is perfect for containers. It features a deep pink flower color with lighter pink. It is vigorous on its own roots and shows much improved disease resistance compared to other miniature roses. So if you love miniatures or if you're looking for something for a pot, this could be a great rose for you. It's 18 inches by 18 inches, and that's a Mayland rose. Okay, so another Mayland rose, this one is a full size. This one's gonna grow five foot by three foot, is Ruby Red. It says that the blooms are going to be cup-like. Ruby Red is a compact and very foliferous rose. The flower color is dark red and non-fading. It performs well on its own roots and makes an excellent container presentation. It has a very slight scent, and that also goes for that pink sun blaze, just very slight. Um, if you're buying roses for scent, these might not be uh, ones that you're interested in. Okay, now let's look at the third Mayland rose, and that is a drift rose. This is Blushing Drift, and it says it displays attractive double pink flower clusters with a warm yellow center. Its compact size, disease resistance, and heavy blooming makes it a stunning and reliable landscape rose. So if you like drift roses, that would be a great rose for you. It's very compact, much like those miniatures. So if you're looking for something at the front of the border, it's only going to be a foot and a half by three wide. So it's going to fill a nice space for you, but stay low in case you have other things that you want to spotlight in the backdrop. The scent is slight. Okay, so here's one more from, this one is from Cordes. And for this one, it has a very slight fragrance also. So not a whole lot of fragrance coming out of Meland and Cordes this year. So this Cordes is called Fiesta Veranda. Fiesta Veranda has a very strong bright flower color, which contrasts nicely against dark green glossy foliage. So this rose, it's very bright and it's yellow with orange and it kind of reminds me, you know, my, uh, my grim fairy tale has two different colors on the blooms. It's got an orange and then a pink. And I was kind of worried when I saw pictures of that, but I like it. And so this could be like Joseph's coat. I think that I've seen that that's multicolored. Is it pinata, I think, is oranges and pinks and yellows. Um, so if you like something that looks festive, Fiesta Veranda could be the rose for you. It's going to grow about four foot by three foot and it says it has cup-like blooms. Let's talk about Jackson and Perkins. And I sometimes am nervous about buying a first year rose because I want to, you know, read everybody's reviews. But this year I made the plunge and I bought Jackson and Perkins release for 2021 Double Easy Orange, but it was so stunning. I couldn't wait, I had to have it. And I'm so glad that I did. The rose has performed so well. It's in constant bloom and I just love the variation in color for Double Easy Orange, and I'd like to see if I can get standards next year, but I digress. Let's talk about Jackson and Perkins and which rose I think they're gonna lull me in with. They have a climbing rose called Cherry Float. Neither subtle or shy, this large climber spreads 10 to 12 feet. It makes a bold statement in the garden with its clusters of decorative velvety red semi-double blooms that pop against the glossy dark green foliage. Seemingly, they can be seen from miles away. 
really miles away because I want people in the water to see my blooms. So maybe I do need this rose. Miles away and they have a nice tea fragrance also. And then they have a quick note that I'll just read real quick. Climbing roses are underutilized in the garden. They're incredibly versatile and multifunctional. And of all the roses, climbers can have the most dramatic effect. There's nothing quite as lovely as a rose covering a wall or a pergola, or even a climber allowed to stand freely, arching towards the ground elegantly. And I am planning this year, I'm bringing a lot of climbers into the garden and I'm planning on pegging a lot of them. So if you're interested in learning about pegging, just make sure that you subscribe. Uh, it'll happen in the spring as I start um, showing you how I peg the roses. And of course, I'll have some climbers that I am putting on obelisks up against the uh, house. So I hope that that will be fun for you to learn with me as I do that. All right, the next Jackson and Perkins release is called Over the Edge. Medium sized with an upright and bushy habit, this free flowering Floribunda blooms in clusters of spiraled old fashioned double blooms on medium length stems. Oh, that was a lot. <laughs> the flowers are soft gold and have a fine pink picotee. I'll have to research that picotee that is shar sharp and defined in the bud, but gently diffuses as the blooms open. The strong fragrance is fruity and spicy. Okay, this one really has my attention. It's called I Caramba. I Caramba, medium sized with rounded and bushy habit. This floribunda blooms in generous clusters of spiraled cuppy and full dark orange flowers with a red suffusion and a glowing gold reverse on medium stems. You can definitely see the influence of its parent, ketchup and mustard. The, floor, the flowers have a lovely tea fragrance. I mean, look at that picture. Can you tell while I'm really intrigued? I mean, the color is just really striking and I can't wait to see it in the person and that one is going to be in my garden next season. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do want to take a quick look. I'm not going to read descriptions. I'm just going to name the names and throw the pictures up for you. There were 2021 20, introductions and I have not seen them out to be able to buy. And so I don't know if this is a case where there is a lag. Let me know if you have these and they're in your garden. Some of the names I do recognize, um, but some of them I have not seen. So let's first look at the 2021 Mayland Rose, the Enchanted Peace. And I'm guessing that, you know, there, there's Peace Rose. There's Chicago Peace Rose, but the Chicago Peace Rose is by Johnston. The original Peace Rose is a Mayland Rose from the 1940s or so. So this is Enchanted Peace, and I'm going to put pictures up to show you the difference between Enchanted Peace and Chicago Peace. I really think that they are, you know, very similar. Um, but this one, of course, is by Mayland, which is great. So if you've had difficulty with Chicago Peace, maybe you want to give this one a try. So Enchanted Peace, uh, it's five foot by three foot, and I'll throw a picture up there. Um, so there was a petite knockout rose. And what's interesting when I read on this is knockout is by Radler. So this is a Mayland knockout and it's petite. Um, it is up to 18 inches tall and um, very slight fragrance, but we know that knockouts really don't have a fragrance. So the petite knockout is interesting. And when I first saw the picture of this, it made me think of a red salvia that I have in my yard. So although it doesn't have great fragrance, and if you're looking for something on the smaller side, maybe you wanna think about just adding a, one of these petite knockouts to the front of your bed for a pop of color. Um, okay, so then we've got a William Radler who I just mentioned, he created the knockout rose. He has created a rose that has a medium damask fragrance. So this one actually has my attention. So if we think about that knockout rose, the knockout rose is, I have them in my garden and I've shared videos with you. They don't care about black spot and budworm and anything. Those things are just going to bloom like crazy. They don't care if you deadhead them. They are just doing their thing. Um, so that's why I'm interested in this rose. If Radler can make a knockout, 
I'm interested in seeing what he's doing that's not a knockout just because of the genetics behind a knockout rose. So check out Sitting Pretty. It grows four foot by four foot. And as I mentioned, it's got a medium damask fragrance. So last one from 2021 that you may have missed is by Mayland and it is called Sunset Horizon. Sunset Horizon has a very unique look. Um, you need to check out that flower if you haven't seen it. It's bright yellow and fades to a deep pink cherry red. So the size is three foot by three foot and a very slight fragrance. And the other ones that I wanna to bring to your attention came from Weeks, their 2021 roses. Golden Opportunity is a gold colored climber and that was by Tom Carruth. It has four inch blooms. It grows 10 to 12 foot. I know I've seen Belinda's blush. So that one is out there and it is three to three and a half inch blooms. It's a medium and upright and the breeder is Shoop for that rose. This one I have in my garden and I hope you've seen it because it is truly striking the colors, fun in the sun. I just love this rose. It is very full like a David Austin would be and um, it, the colors are from apricots to yellows to pinks. It's just really beautiful. So check out Fun in the Sun. Now this one, I'm actually interested in sending to my daughter. I really think that she's going to like it. And it, I didn't see it out um, last season. This is Perfume Factory. It's by Tom Carruth. It has strong fruity spices. Its parents are Neptune and Blue Yonder. So when you look at this rose, um, it's a hybrid tea. So it has that nice uh, rose shape that you're used to when you think about florist roses. Um, but it has magenta fading to lavender pink. So check that one out also in case you didn't see it last year. I'm sure a lot of our vendors are going to have it on their site for order. So I hope this information was helpful and you've got a list of things that you'd like to try to look for in 2022. So as we're planning for our upcoming orders, you have High Country. They'll ship now and they're going to be updating their inventory in the next couple of weeks for fall. You also, Northland Rosarium will be updating their website at the end of September and that will come to you in fall as a potted plant. At the end of September, Ragon Nursery is going to update their inventory online and you're going to want to order those bare roots. They'll come at the end of February or March, depending on your zone. Uh, let's see, Palatine is going to be um, updating in December. They're a little bit later this year. Uh, Chambly Roses is going to be updating their site for fall. Uh, Raft Island is going to be putting his bare roots out for order at the end of de December and then they'll come to you in the spring and David Austin you can order now call them on the phone if you don't see it on their website and see if they're sold out the variety that you want speaking about selling out my newbies you got to hear me on this and you're not going to believe it when these sites open for their ordering it is like uh, Black Friday when you've been waiting outside of a store and you're rushing in to get the rose that you want. It is a madhouse. Um, so be watching those dates. If there is a rose that you want and you would be sad if you did not get it in the coming season, please watch those dates and times that the orders open up because they will go like that servers will crash. I mean, all of the Rosarians are there on that day and it is a madhouse. It's so exciting though to add these roses to your garden. So please make sure that um, if there's something that you want, that you are watching those sites. And if you are unsure of the date that that vendor is going to be opening for ordering, then you need to reach out because I don't want you to miss it. Okay, out of the other recommendations that I've made for you, I've talked about all the bare root vendors that I order from. We've talked about um, the potted roses. Roses Unlimited is open now, people. <laughs> Look at their site. And I know that when you are, a lot of people have said that their site is not as easy to use. All you need to do, of course, is call them on the phone if there's a specific rose that you're looking for and you're having trouble with their site. But if you go to collections in the upper right, 
browse, it's going to bring up all of their roses and you're going to have to spend time getting to know helpmefind.com as you look at the name and then go check out the picture and see if it's something you want. But they have great roses. Um, a Reverence for Roses ships year round and they have updated their site each time they get a new rose. And I mentioned High Country and Northland Rosarium. So I hope this video is helpful and you are gonna get some great new babies. Um, if you could comment below and let me know which roses you're looking forward to in 2022. Let me know if I missed any besides the David Austins that we haven't found out about. And um, let me know from the 2021s uh, that I talked about if you have experience with any of those because I'm sure our newbies will be reading the comments and they would like to see what you have to say. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.